This presentation is being made to help you better understand your natural defense against threats to your health. So, let's talk about your immune system. Your immune system is what protects you from disease. It is our first line of defense against illness and disease, and its role is to seek out invaders which attack our bodies constantly. In order to best protect us, our immune system must be able to recognize threats, respond to those threats, and then be able to remember those threats if they attack us again. We want our immune system to be intelligent, strong, and balanced. So let's walk through the way our immune system works. And since it's common, let's use the chickenpox virus as an example. Little Johnny is a happy child, but someone at the daycare center who has chickenpox sneezes. And in a few days, little Johnny begins to break out in red bumps, which change to blisters. And Johnny has chickenpox. Johnny's immune system had never seen the chickenpox virus before and didn't know what was making him feel so bad. After several days, Johnny's immune system identifies the chickenpox virus and starts producing fighters, which defeat the chickenpox virus. But for several days, Johnny was really sick with chickenpox before he became well. Once the immune system has recognized and defeated an invader, it has the ability to store the identity of the invader by creating something called a memory cell. That's the reason people who had chicken pox only had it once. A memory cell is like a wanted poster. The memory cell forever carries the identity of the chicken pox virus around your body. And if the chicken pox virus ever appears again, the memory cell immediately sounds the alarm and an immediate overwhelming production of immune system fighters is produced and you don't become ill. You don't even know you've been exposed because now you have immunity. Isn't that a wonderful word, immunity? Immunity, it means you have protection. But the problem with developing immunity this way is that first you had to become ill, like little Johnny, before you became well. The second way that you develop immunity is through a vaccination. Here's the way a vaccine works, again using the chickenpox virus as an example. The chickenpox virus is weakened, so it can't reproduce and cause harm. It still has the same appearance, but it can't cause disease. A person is vaccinated with a harmless chickenpox virus. Your immune system thinks you have been attacked by the real harmful virus, and it develops fighters to defeat the supposed threat. It thinks you really had chickenpox. Your immune system develops memory cells so that later, if a harmful chickenpox virus enters your body, you have instant recognition and an overwhelming immune response, and you don't become ill, and you have developed again that wonderful word, immunity. That's the way a vaccine works. The problem is, however, that there are so many germs, viruses, bacteria, parasites, and fungal organisms, and there are so few vaccines. So let's review a moment how we have developed immunity. We can develop immunity and thus protection by actually having a disease, like chickenpox, where we finally figure out the identity of the invader and store a memory cell which protects us against exposure in the future. We can also receive a vaccination, which basically tricks our immune system into responding and therefore producing those memory cells which recognize a particular threat and give us protection or immunity. And until recently, these were the only two ways that could assure you of being protected against disease from invaders. Now there's a third way, and you need to know about something that has been discovered. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had a factory where we could produce memory cells, the same type of memory cells that our immune system produces after we had an illness like chickenpox or after we receive a vaccination? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could have machines in that factory which made memory cells which we could consume in order to educate and strengthen our immune systems? Well, we do have such a factory, multiple factories, and they are farms and the machines in those factories are Bessie the cow and Henrietta the hen. 
and you need to know how we can utilize them to help protect us. Because cows and chickens come into contact with exactly the same threats that we do, the same germs, and they have exactly the same type of response to those threats that we do. They are exposed and figure out how to fight the threat and they produce an immune response just like we do. And again, just like us, they store the memory of those threats in specific memory cells just as we do. Cows transfer their memory cells to their newborn when it nurses through a special first milk called colostrum, just as humans do. Chickens do the same thing. They pack their memory cells in the yolk of the egg so that the newborn chick will have the immune system, education, and strength that the mother hen has when it hatches. Those memory cells that cows and chickens produce have the same function as the memory cells that we humans produce. They allow instant recognition of threats and immediate response to those threats. And those memory cells are called transfer factors. Memory cells are called transfer factors. Those wanted posters, those memory cells are called transfer factors. And we've learned how to take those memory cells, those transfer factors, from colostrum and egg yolks, and through a special filtration process, put them in a capsule so that we can consume them on a daily basis. We can consume recognition cells, transfer factors, so that we can educate and strengthen our immune system, that system which protects us. So now we don't have to go through the learning process each time we're exposed. Our immune system has strength. It has knowledge. It has the ability to respond because of transfer factors. Transfer factors, those memory molecules which educate our immune system and give it the ability to respond immediately because it's able to recognize threats through those memory cells which act like wanted posters. Now, if we're exposed to a disease threat, those memory cells give us the ability to respond immediately, overwhelmingly, and we don't have to become ill like little Johnny. And we can receive the same protection as if though we'd received a vaccination by producing transfer factors. Transfer factors, those memory cells that give us the ability to respond immediately to disease threats and to have a healthy and long life.